Is everything okay? You wouldn't answer the door, I had to use my security override codes, and you haven't been on the command deck in days. I heard Commander Rennick's been pretty much running things topside. What's going on? You... you don't look so good. Are you sure you're okay? Hold on, I'll call the doc. Okay, okay. I'll hold off on the dock, but come on. Something's clearly bothering you. What's going on? Wait a minute. Is someone else hurt? Someone else is in trouble? <sighs> okay, well that's a relief. Then it can't be that. Oh, of course. I was just ending my shift, and I wanted to drop off the ship's quarterly security report. That's why I'm here. The only part of being chief of security that I hate with a passion. Yeah, yeah, I did sign up for this gig, but what other job was I gonna get? <laughs> yeah, right. Can you actually see me, of all people, pouring beakers and fiddling with microscopes? No. No science officer jumpsuit for me. Next. Right. I'm gonna have to pass on engineering, too. You keep forgetting that I'm the only cadet in Academy history to crash the entire campus water reclamation system for three hours by inputting the wrong code. And those things are damn near indestructible. You really want to put me in charge of making sure the ship's engines don't blow up? Plus, you're forgetting these. See them? They're kind of hard to miss. Every time I'd have to scoot up and down the maintenance chute to monitor the engines, my antenna would keep scraping against the top of the tube. Last time I checked, I'm an Endaran, not a sardine. Yes, they do move around, but it's a strain to push them that far back. You know how you humans get dizzy and off balance when you hold your heads down for more than a minute or two and then you suddenly look up? It's the same way for us when we have to strain our antenna in an awkward position for too long. Sure, we can push through it if we're doing simple things like carrying equipment or fending off an attack, but operating sensitive diagnostic tools and inputting precise commands into a database in that condition? Not so much. But enough about my career choices. Let's just get back to you. Come on. We both know it's not just nothing. Tell me. Is that your data pad wedged under your arm? Is that what you were looking at? Oh, you got a message from Emily. What, is she trying to move the wedding date again? Or does she have a problem with the caterers? Or Here, let me take that. Hmm, where did you move the play icon? Ah, here it is. Greetings, my dear one. I hope this message finds you well. And I hope you're sitting down for this because I've got to tell you something you didn't expect. And something you definitely don't want to hear. Fifty Creds says she's moving the date, probably because she needs an extra three months to write a dissertation about some species of cactus she's found in some backwater. Okay, okay. I'm hitting play. It's tearing me up inside to have to tell you this, but it's tearing me up even more to not say it. I've been trying with all of my being to search my heart, to search my thoughts, but I keep coming to the same conclusion. It's inescapable. The wedding. I, I can't go through with it. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I, I can't marry you. Wait, what? Um, how the hell could she just... Hold on. I know you must hate me right now. And I don't blame you, but please know that despite that, I still love you more than you can know. I'm just not... I'm just not in love with you. I'm not in love with all the intangible things that make you, you. And I know that that's a shitty explanation, but it's the only one that comes close to encapsulating how I feel. My heart longs for freedom. 
for passion, for adventure. You're a great guy, but these are just things you can't give me, and it's not fair to you for me to try and demand these things of you. Just like I can't be the loving, devoted wife that you deserve. I know that this isn't fair, and I don't expect you to forgive me, but- Okay, fuck this. I'm done. I can't listen to any more of this shit. Man, I'm so sorry. You must be crushed. Come here. I can't believe she'd do this to you. You poured so much of yourself into that relationship, I don't- I don't see how- Wait, what do you mean that's not the worst of it? Okay, I'll take a look. Let me see the pad again. What am I looking for? The transmission code? Yeah, I'm familiar with those. She transmitted the message from a ship. There's no way to know which one she's on, though, so... I mean, unless it's archived in a... Wait a minute. That looks familiar. Where have I seen that code before? Oh, shit. No, you can't be serious. I knew I'd seen that ship identical before. She's on Corin Aranzad's ship? The Crimson Wraith? He's wanted in five sectors. He lit up every security board from here to Cornus 3. He just busted out of a penal colony not so long ago and... Oh, sorry. You're right. You don't need to be reminded of that. Didn't mean to say it out loud. It's just so hard to... Wait a minute. How do you know she ran off with him and he isn't just holding her hostage or something? You talked to her sister yesterday? Well, she picked a fine time to tell you that Emily had a past fling with a Brakari gangster. For the love of- Nobody ever told you that they'd been an item? How long ago was that? You're right, it doesn't matter, but a dainty botanist and a cartel underboss? I wouldn't have believed that if you hadn't told me. Look, there's nothing you could have done. Once her mind was made up, it was already in motion. Stop. Don't go there. Listen to me. None of this. Please. Just listen to me. None of this is your fault. It's not. You bent over backwards to make her happy, and you showered her with love, support, and affection. It's not your job to amuse her 24-7. If she needs excitement so much, she can park her ass in an encounter module and just go nuts. I know you don't want to hear this right now, but I'm gonna say it anyways. You're far too good for her. What makes me say that? <laughs> Maybe the fact that I've known you for years? You were a stand-up guy long before they promoted you to captain. Still can't believe a year ago we were both lieutenant commanders. It blows my mind. Of course, my record and my, shall we say, saucy disposition weren't exactly conductive to placing me on the fast track to command. <laughs> anyway, even during the academy days, everyone knew they could count on you, and they knew how much people meant to you. They knew that their feelings mattered to you, and that you'd never take anyone for granted, and that hasn't changed. Why do you think that of all the captains the Admiralty had to choose from, you got a brand spanking new Sentinel class vessel, the biggest, toughest cruiser class in the fleet. They had hundreds of small frigates, destroyers, and light cruisers at their disposal, and they could have picked any of those smaller vessels out for you, but there were only 12 Sentinels. As our Shatarian science officer would say, the laws of probability were definitely not in your favor. But yet, against all odds, here you are. Here we are. And I think all 250 of the Mjolnir's crew are the better for it.
Tell that to who? And at which conference? Do you mean the captain's conference you attended two months ago? Well, what did they say? You overheard them call you what? What did you say? Captain Camer- what? Camomiles? Wait, what is that? Hold on, let me look that up. Oh, chamomile. I'm not familiar with that. Why would they call you- Oh. Damn it. No wonder you're so upset. The conference was bad enough and then Emily barges in and piles this on. That's the last thing you needed. <sighs> One saying you're not adventurous enough and the others are comparing you to a warm, cozy, sleepy time beverage like the ones my grandma used to make. That's just not right. That's not entirely it? There's more to it? What do you even mean? Yeah, you told me once that you were an only child, and I know you and your parents are close. Oh, you never told me that part. Really? Nobody before Emily? Wow, that's hard to believe. I guess I just assumed you dated a lot. I know you studied really hard, and you once told me you hardly had time for anything else, but I never realized you'd missed out on so much. You give up a lot to get to where you are. No, there's no such thing as you boring me with details. Except that ancient Roman architecture documentary you tricked me into watching with you, but... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. So, your folks thought you'd never find anyone? That you'd never have a family of your own? Yeah, I guess they would kind of see Emily as their last hope. Do they know the wedding's off? How could they blame you for that? That doesn't even make any- Okay, okay. There is so much I want to say right now, but- <sighs> They're your parents, and I know you love them, so I'll just keep it to myself. No, my antenna are not twitching. What are you- <sighs> Okay, well I guess they are. I hadn't noticed. And no, those aren't my angry twitches. You're close, but I don't think you've ever seen these twitches. I'm a little more than angry. <sighs> yeah, I'm okay. My people aren't exactly known for being calm. Especially when we're watching someone we care about suffer for no good reason. What? What's so funny? Yeah, you and I do get along very well, but I don't know what you mean by ironic. What's so ironic about us? Oh, so I'm fire and you're ice, huh? Funny that you say that when I'm the one who came from a planet covered in ice. And? Who says that we have to be a lot alike to get along? I thought humans had a saying. That opposites attract? Besides, I think we're way more alike than you may think. What do I mean? <laughs> You're the guy who, on at least two occasions, stepped up and put his own career on the line to keep home guard from booting my ass out the door. The captain who succeeded where even our best diplomats failed when you convinced the Mej Hadar to trust us and talk with us for the first time. And now, we're trading partners with them, and they've given us access to medical tech the likes of which we've never even seen before. You're also the captain who had the bright but insane idea of intercepting, attacking, and then taking heavy fire from an entire Satiri Imperial battle group, luring it into an asteroid field, and then playing the world's most protracted game of hide-and-seek with them long enough for Home Guard intelligence to uncover the truth about who actually attacked their colonies. It turns out the Vantarans were trying to frame us for the attack and get us and the Satiri at each other's throats so they could swoop in and mop up what was left after we decimated each other. 
If you hadn't stopped that armada before it could attack our colonies along the border, we'd probably be at war by now. And in case you've forgotten, you're the man who saved my life. Yes, I know you told me to never bring that up again, Captain. Sir. And yes, I know you hate it when I call you Captain or Sir. As if you don't know that's exactly why I would do it. But I think you need a refresher. That ion storm had swatted our shuttle and had us spinning like a Lakatha bat in a hurricane. We were headed for the Cigna 5's atmosphere, full speed. Somehow Rollins managed to land her, but it was a hard landing. He was out cold when we hit. Weiserman was bleeding internally, and a support beam had collapsed on me and pinned me down. My left arm and right leg were shattered. You yourself, we found out later on, had three broken ribs, a punctured lung, and a concussion. Plasma had leaked into the cabin, and there was a fire. You dragged Rollins out, and then Weiserman, and then you made your way to the rear of the cabin where I was... I don't even want to think about it. The lung injury already had you laboring, and the smoke just made it worse. You knew you couldn't use a pulsed ion pistol to cut the beam away because it would ignite the plasma. Here's the part I never told you about. The part I never told anyone about. In my report, I said I was drifting in and out of consciousness and could hardly remember anything. It was only partly true. I was drowsy and weak, but I was mostly conscious. And I remember nearly everything. I saw you clawing at that hot, jagged beam with your bare hands, even as it was burning and cutting into you. I begged you to go. I begged you to leave me behind and save yourself, but that just made you even more determined. I was almost in tears as I kept begging you to let me go, but then you did something I'd never heard you do before. It was so at a left field that it nearly shocked me to complete consciousness. You yelled at me to shut the hell up. Well, more so roared at me than yelled, to be honest. I'd never heard you speak to anyone like that before, let alone me, and I was about to let you have it because I was super pissed. It was bad enough I couldn't help you on account of my shattered arm and leg, but worse yet, here I was, tasked with keeping you safe, and you're risking your life to save mine. But I heard the desperation, the tortured anguish in your voice, and the way that you were looking at me at that moment. It was it was the look of a man whose whole life was being ripped away from him. You weren't trying to save your security officer, you were trying to save me. Not your friend me, either. You can shake your head no all you want to, but you can't deny it. I saw it. It was hard to see you clearly through the smoke, but I saw enough to see that you just kept pulling and tugging at that cursed beam with every ounce of strength you had left. You were shaking all over, and your knees were buckling, and your muscles had to be on the verge of giving out. But then, just as I thought you were about to collapse and share my fate, your muscle spasm stopped. Your whole body suddenly tensed up, and I heard you roar the loudest no I've ever heard erupt from within a person. It was like you were railing against fate itself, refusing to accept it defying it with every ounce of your being. It was like you were fighting, fighting to reach within the deepest parts of yourself to find some reserve strength where there should have been none left to spare. And then suddenly, I heard the screech of twisted metal. Then a thunderous clink that shook the whole shuttle. Somehow, against all odds, you muscled that beam off of me and then you carried me to safety before the shuttle blew. The medics still don't know how you mustered the strength to carry all of us out of there in your condition, but I do. Let me see your hands. Just, just 
do it, please. You know my people are a race of warriors. These hands I'm holding right now, the same hands that were bloodied and scarred trying to save me, they don't belong to a boring man. They don't belong to a simple man. They don't even belong to a coward. They belong to a warrior. The finest kind of warrior. One who cares for his friends deeply and loves his woman passionately and fights for his causes boldly and with conviction. He does these things without bravado or boast. He just silently carves out his place in the universe and claims what is his. You claimed more than you know the day that shuttle went down. For years, you had already shown me that you were a man of honor and integrity, and you've been a true friend to me at times when you had nothing to gain and everything to lose. My fondness for you had started to grow ever since, though... I just brushed it off as a strong bond born of friendship and mutual respect. But after seeing you during that shuttle accident, I knew it was something more. And it's said that only a man with a warrior spirit can claim the heart of an Andaran woman. There is much truth in that saying. But despite all of this, I couldn't reveal my true feelings to you as much as I desperately wanted to. You were seeing Emily, and you were madly in love with her. Everyone knew it. It would have been dishonorable for me as a friend, or as anything else, to do anything that might get in the way. Despite my feelings. Despite what the doc told me afterwards. Apparently, when the rescue teams found you, you were barely conscious and on the verge of going into shock, but the first name that crossed your lips was mine. You were calling my name, asking where I was, asking the medics if I was okay. Yes, yes, you asked about Rollins and Weiserman, true enough, but only a few minutes after you asked about me. I asked the doc why he told me that, but he just gave the coyest of smiles and went back to work. I think he knew more than he was willing to admit. I know that this is the worst timing in the history of bad timing, and I know I probably shouldn't be saying all this now, but I can't help it. I I can't. I need to tell you this, and you need to hear it. I'm probably looking at you the same way you were looking at me back on Signify 5 when you thought you were about to lose me forever. I'm watching you slip away from reality, away from us, away from me. You're being pulled into a deep, dark void and I can't fucking stand it. I can't. And damn it, I won't let it happen because I care about you too much. I care about... Okay, I didn't mean to startle you, but I'm not going to apologize because I'm not sorry. And, judging from all of that heat radiating off of you, you're not sorry either. My antenna pick up heat, remember? It comes in handy when you're trying to seek shelter in a snowstorm. I know, I know, this isn't exactly proper, well, inappropriate is a strong word. I wouldn't call it that, but yeah. The Admiral T might call it that, but who's gonna tell them? You? We're not even on duty right now. Okay, I know that's not what you meant. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. (sighs) Please. Just, there are exceptions. You know this. If we both held the same rank, nobody would care. We're not even working in the same divisions. You're in command and I'm in security. Okay, worst case scenario, I'm willing to request a transfer. No, I'm not being impulsive. Have you ever known me do anything just on a whim and without thinking it through? You'd keep your command of the Mjolnir and you'd still have me. 
yes, you wouldn't get to see me very often, but a lot of people are in long distance relationships, especially in the service. Hold on, I know what you're about to say. Yes, Emily was long distance too, but I'm not her. I'm me. I'm yours, if that's what you want. Well, is that what you want? I thought that's how you felt. I just needed to hear you say it. Then let's just cut through all the... Really? You're still coming up with reasons to get in your own way? You know, the only problem with looking out for others all the time is that you tend to neglect yourself. You deserve to be happy. You earned it many times over. And you know what? To hell with it. I'll tell you what the hell that was. It was me striking my superior officer. In keeping with the traditions of my people, which I remind you, you are bound to respect per the Commonwealth Charter, you must either punish me or claim me as your mate. More to the point, either call the guards and order them to arrest me and throw me in the brig, or fuck me right here, right now.